All right. Uh, again, uh, great Thursday night. Um, was happy not only for our fans, but our football team. Uh, we closed that chapter last night. Chapter one's closed. Uh, again, a lot of things we can learn from the game. Uh, I think there was you know, a lot of learning moments um, that uh, our kids took away. Uh, obviously, we did not play a perfect game. Uh, we never will, but it was, it, was, it was just an average football game for us. Uh, a lot of things we left out on the field, explosive plays on offense, uh, giving up explosives on defense, uh, letting someone run the ball like they did uh, is not our MO. And stuff that we got to clean up and we will clean up. Um, but, you know, when you look at it all together, I mean, we played a really, really good opponent. I think West Virginia is a good football team. Um, they'll, they'll have a lot of success this year, I think. Um, I think they're better than they were a year ago. So, you know, uh, so we can look at it and say, hey, you know, we came out of there, played average or below average, whatever you want to call it, and, and got a win. Um, and then, you know, we've got to play a lot better this weekend to have a chance in the, the Johnny Majors Classic, as you guys know, coming up. And, um, you know, I'll move on just, you know, just going into the next game. Um, I've had, you know, at least an extra two days to kind of work on them. And, um, you know, it's exciting uh, to, to have them come into Pittsburgh. Sounds like the first time an SEC team has been. You got the Florida Gators shirt on, like, what, what's going on here? Get the guy a T-shirt. Uh, first time an SEC. Uh, SEC team coming into to uh, Acrisure Stadium, so uh, we're excited about that. Uh, we know we're going to get their best shot. They're talented, they're athletic, they're an SEC football team um, that's that you know is going to look the part when they walk into uh, into the stadium on Saturday. Um, you know, Coach Heupel does a great job. He's he's a he's a football coach. Um, you know, offensively, you know, there's not a more explosive uh, offense. There's not a faster tempo offense in the country. Alex Golish is also the offense coordinator, but, you know, I think Heupel kind of does most of it. Um, but Alex is a good coach as well. Um, and, uh, and they're good. They're going to snap the ball between 7 and, you know, 7 and 12 seconds, 75% of the time. Um, so if you guys are up in the box, you know, don't, don't step away because you'll, you'll miss three plays if you turn your head. Um, so it'll be it'll be fast or athletic, um, you know. Hendon Hooker, who we've seen for the last 12 years as a quarterback, he's still there. He's you know old Virginia Tech quarterback. Uh, he's got lots of weapons with speed uh, everywhere on the field. And then defensively, um, Coach Banks is the DC, and you know multiple coverages and fronts. Be a lot of stuff going on. Um, and uh, really good football team coming in here. And again, they knocked the heck out of Ball State early last uh, last week. So. Uh, I think Hooker was out after 61 plays, so they didn't play a whole bunch. And um, but we, you know, we we've been in a battle. So um, questions. It seemed like Keaton was maybe a little more effective out of shotgun and under center. When you and Frank went back and looked at it, was it a comfort level, or what do you think kind of was the difference? <coughs> well, I think you know, I think he's comfortable doing both. Uh, we're going to continue to do both. Um, you know, what appeared on tape to be you know better, um, you know. Probably just a coincidence. He's good under center as well, um, you know. And again, you want to have the, the the ability to do both. We want to be multiple on offense, and we'll continue to continue to get better. You know, we weren't we didn't play a perfect game. I thought Keaton played a really good game, um, really good, better than I thought when I watched it. You know, um, you know, live. Um, but just you know, he was. Uh, we thought he was late with the ball, but there was other issues if, with some of the routes that I won't get into the the, the weeds with that. But there's some, you know, he was waiting on his receivers to get where they need to be, and they weren't there for whatever reason that we'll, you know, we won't discuss. But uh, so there were some things there. There were some angles that weren't right, and where he's got to hold on and throws it away just because of some uh, departure angles on, on routes and little things like that, just details that you, know, you guys probably wouldn't see on tape. Um, I didn't see it. I mean, I, you know, it's news to me when I listen to Coach Signetti. He's he's a, he's he's really sharp, and um, so a lot of things that are very everything's fixable. That's the great thing is everything um, is going to get a lot better from week one to week two, I think. And but you know, again, the opponent's going up as well, so maybe you don't see it with the, the naked eye. Pastor Bossier talked Thursday night about how something you guys struggled with last year was playing well the week after a really big game. He pointed out how he lost to Western Michigan after Tennessee and how he lost to Miami after the Clemson game. He talked about how handling success and adversity is a big focus for the senior leaders and portraying that to the other players. What are some challenges that come after a big emotional win like you had on Thursday going into the next week? Yeah, well, we've talked a lot for eight years on you know handling success and handling adversity. I think our guys are used to handling adversity every day, you know, um, you know, 
they, they deal with it. We handled adversity well Saturday. We hung in there all the way for 60 minutes. Um, handle success is always a problem. It's always the biggest issue that you'll have with a football team and, and you know, hardest thing people have in life is handling it. And, and uh, um, so, but, you know, I think handling um, success this week when you kind of play, let's just put it that way, I think it makes it a little bit easier about that. So if they can get excited about that, then good for them. I'm not, you didn't see me dancing around in the locker room, okay? And there'll be, there'll be no dancing, Jerry. Do you think it's two days out? No question about it. Um, as far as, you know, emotionally for the kids, I think so a little bit. But, you know, we still drug it back up last night because we, you know, try to, you know, clean up everything from special teams to offense and defense, you know, gave the kids Saturday off. So um, I, emotionally, I don't think the two days are going to make any, any difference. Matt, wouldn't you, you, you talked after the game, you know, you were hot about how the run defense played. What did you see in that you had time to look over the film, a little bit of a longer weekend, and it says, like, hey, this is what we have to clean up to make sure this doesn't happen? Well, I think it starts with coaches, and, in, in, you know, it starts with me. Anytime, you know, anytime we're, it starts right here, head coach. Um, and, uh, and it trickles down to not making plays. And, and uh, you know, I think sometimes for openers, you can have too much in because you're not sure what you're going to get. And I think defensively, it started with having too many things in that you're worried about. What if they do this? What if they do that? We better have that in. We better have this in. We better have some of this, too. You know, you got to have a flavor of everything in. And sometimes you put too many flavors, you know, um, in, 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 you're going to have a problem. I think that's part of it. So to me, it's, you know, on coaching. You know, I went back and just kind of did a statistical thing on, hey, what did we call? What did we practice all week? I think we had... 371 snaps of base defense, and then what did we end up calling? We wasted a lot of time, you know, and I think sometimes, like, narrowing it down, you know, uh, never having played West Virginia, you know, you go into uh, this game this weekend, we, we played Tennessee four times already, or this will be the fourth time. You know, two at UCF, one at Tennessee, this will be the fourth opportunity to, to face that style of offense, um, you know, the same kind of defense that, that they've been running. So, um, you know, I think I think that helps you a ton of knowing what you're going to get, what you do need, don't need, what do you got to be ready for, and you always want to have enough in that you know in case they do something different. But I just feel like we we practiced, you know, too much of stuff, and you know, which doesn't give your kids an opportunity to be cleaner. Um, so I think that'll help us. You got to face Joe Milton last year, Hendon Hooker this year. Do you see any differences or similarities between the two quarterbacks? Well, we played them both last year. I mean, they're both really good. I mean. Um, Joe started the game off, um, and he's got a cannon uh, of an arm. He's athletic, um, and, uh, and he played well when he got in the other day as well against Ball State. And then Hooker came in. You know, I think we turned turned uh, Milton over a few times, which we've been known to do. And um, and um, you know, I think Brandon Hill had a nice pick against uh, Hendon Hooker. Um, so. You know, they're both good quarterbacks. I mean, you know, and again, it starts with their, their offense. They, you know, they're, they're, they do certain things. They take advantage of you. They have what we call these max splits, okay? And uh, they're going to spread you out. I mean, you're going to be in man coverage all day. Even if you don't want to be in man coverage, you want to be in cover three, good luck to you. I mean, they're going to be, their favorite formation is having two detached receivers. And uh, the offensive line, the quarterback and running back are going to be in this little podium area here. And everybody else is going to be lined up way out there. And that's what they do. They spread you out. And um, it, so it is a spread, fast tempo offense. Um, and again, both Milton and Hooker do a great job of operating. Is there a lot to learn from last year's win? Because it was you know, almost 365 days ago, is that too much time with the transfer portal and everything to really go back and look at how that team operates? Or are you still breaking down that film and gathering a lot of information from the win last year? If we're still breaking down that tape from last year, we got some major issues. We're like in slow motion, like a turtle. Um, no, we've 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 looked at that. We've looked at stuff all summer on Tennessee and, and every opponent that we play. So, you know, we're ahead as far as where we need to be. You know, we we've dissected that. We know what we did well, what we did bad, what we have to do to fix it. But they're gonna have stuff that they're gonna do to say, okay, this is what Pitt did well. We got we got to do this, and they're gonna have their other options. And that's what happens when you play a team several times. Um, so. Um, yeah, you know, I hope we've you know we figured out what we did in the past. And you guys are kind of familiar with with Hendon. He's pretty familiar with you all. What have you guys been able to key on, like you know, as far as his decision making that's helped him, you know, have success when he's had success against you guys, and when you guys have been able to kind of get the upper hand on him? Yeah, I mean, there's nothing. It was just you know guys making plays. I mean, he's <laughs> he's got a great arm. Uh, he's smart. 
Uh, and like I said, you know, you look at where he is right now compared to where he was two years ago when he was at Virginia Tech, two totally different guys, okay? And that's obviously a tribute. That's no slam on what Virginia Tech did with him. But he fits into that offense, and he is, you know, um, his quarterback coach is coaching the heck out of him. I think he does. I think he's really, really sharp. Um, so. Hey, you mentioned the rush defense. How about the rush offense? What did you see when you looked at that tape? And are you going to have a full complement? Um, again, you know, I think West Virginia was good up front. They packed the box. We didn't do a good job of adjusting to, you know, they, they, they had the numbers in the box. So, um, you know, we've got to give ourselves a, a more friendly box if we're going to p- try to run it. Um, you know, um, again, was disappointed in the offensive line and their play. Uh, so maybe they had fat heads. Maybe they were thinking about how good they were and we're all coming back and we're going to be great. Um, but they weren't, you know, and, um, you know, and that's that's flat what it is. So they should have a little bit of a you know chip on the shoulder this week, to uh, you know to come back and show them who they really are. Back to the run defense. Uh, yeah, never talk about the run defense. This is good. Usually it's always the pass defense. What's wrong with pass defense? You can see how annoying it is when someone can run the ball. Like it's not good. Okay, um, and it just opens up every everything. I mean, just they, now they can throw it in, they can run it. So. Go back, Jerry. Was, was there any, any problem with maybe fair, failure to get off blocks? Um, I would say no. I would say no. That was. I mean, there's guys there to make plays. It was. It was mental hesitation, um, poor fits, um, poor poor alignment. Sometimes. I mean, if you don't get lined up perfectly, it's a problem. Um, so just a lack of detail in what we're doing, and, and you know, sometimes that happens in openers and. Um, you know, I talked to a couple guys like, you know, coach, it's a lot different than practice. Yeah, it is. But you got to make it the same, you know. Um, but that's what happens when guys are playing for the first time. Pat, I think it's something about the maturity or the evolution of the program that you can play a game against a rival and play, in your words, average to below average and still find a way to win. It does a little bit, you know. Um, you know, I was just talking to Coach Stack and, you know, we we got you know GPS is on the kids, and we can see how fast they're going. We can't use the data in in game, but just you know, we got more guys running over 20 miles an hour than any time since we've been here. So our guys are running fast. I think we had 28 guys running over 18 mile an hour. So we got guys that are running well. I don't know, you know, we didn't have the data back in 2015, but it'd be interesting to compare 15 to to 22. But uh, you know, but sometimes you you know, I mean, you get you give up a block punt, you know. Uh, you turn the ball over, you know, Bub Means turns the ball over, and we, we gave them plenty of options to come back in the game. Besides the lack of detail, I mean, turnovers in, in itself, you know, could cause you big problems. Uh, you gave them a five-yard drive, I and mean, we gave them all kinds of stuff that, you know, that you can't against good football teams. Yeah, I'm going to have to do, uh, do the injury question uh, that Jerry normally does, but uh, is there any word on if Deslin and Roddy will be able to practice fully this, fully this week, how they're doing it? He just threw you under the bus, Jerry. Okay. So I'm used to it. <laughs> Jerry, I love you. I never threw you under the bus. You know, again, it's been eight years, Chris, and you know I'm not going to talk injuries. Uh, those are private things. And, and uh, you know, when Brandon Hill was banged up early in the year, you know, I'll never forget. Matter of fact, let me pull it up here. Hope um, Adrian, she said, uh, this is after, let's see, this is August 14th. It was probably... It wasn't Jerry. I know it wasn't Jerry. Um, you know, hey, Coach Narduzzi. I saw the interview on Friday with a reporter asked you about Brandon. Thank you for respecting his medical privacy. It looked like that question pissed you off. Thank you for caring about your players. You know, I could see you care about all of them. But and it goes on and on and some emojis and, you know, that's from my Brandon Hill's mother. But, you know, it's just like, you know, no, you know parents, I mean, that's, that's the first ever I got from a parent. I was like, you know what? I guess I'm not screwing it up too bad. Next question. I know you like to block out the outside noise, but the, the, you guys are an underdog at home against a team you beat last year coming off a year in which you won your conference championship. Does that – you might block out the noise, but does that – is that a chip that you guys might play? I mean – You know what? <laughs> to me, you know, you like to be the underdog every week. I don't even know what the point spread was last week. We were probably the underdog last week at home. Um, you know, I know our crowd was the underdog for sure going into that game. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it, is what it, it is what it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good football team coming in here, you know. Um, I mean, you heard all summer about the SEC, and, the, you know, there's only really two Power Five conferences in the country, the SEC and the Big Ten. 
Um, so we're we're in the Pee Wee League, and and you know we're going to line up and see if we can play. That sets me up perfectly for what I was going to ask next. You guys, you know, Florida State had a big win last night. You know, you guys beat a Power Five team. Carolina, NC State, kind of, you know, they escaped against teams that group of five programs that made bowl games last mm-hmm. year. During media days, you guys talked about, hey, the only way to change the perception of the league is going out in non-conference and playing quality opponents and winning. I mean, did you guys at least feel like you struck the first blow for the conference over the weekend? You know what? I, you know, maybe, maybe, but I'm not worried about anybody else. I'm just worried about what Pitt's doing and how we can get better every week, how we can fix our issues. It's, you know, I'm happy for last night I watched the tail end of that game. Um, and, uh, you know, I was happy for Coach Norvell. I texted him this morning. Anytime coaches have good, good wins, uh, it, it's good to see. So um, it's great for the conference, and I'm sure the commissioner's happy. I'm just worried about staying in our lane and doing what we need to do here in Pittsburgh. Did Taylor uh, play, you know, the last drive or so, mm-hmm. right tackle? How did he do? And did he get more time going forward? Yeah, but I think Branson will get some more time. Probably maybe should have subbed him in earlier. You know, it's, it's a long game. And, you know, and again, you know, I think one of the issues is just subbing guys in. I mean, you know, uh, Jalen Barden didn't get enough reps. Jalen Barden deserves more reps. Um, you know, there's some thing, things, you know, like I think Branson Taylor is, is a good football player. And, um, you know, I think Matt might have gotten a little bit tired near the end. You know, guy, it's, a, it's an emotional game. It's, uh, it's a physical uh, game. And uh, Branson came in and did well. So, um, you know, I told guys, you know, the night before the game, Wednesday night, like, hey, this is an evaluation period. You, you put good stuff on tape. You know, Tyler Wiltz should have got more. You know, we should have got Tyler in the game more. Um, but, uh, you know, there's just, you know, at different positions, you get two or three plays, then we got to get you more. If you go out there for two and you look good, then we're going to give you more the next week. And that's, you know, you try to earn those reps. Um, so I think that's what kind of goes with it. Sometimes coaches make mistakes and we don't sub guys enough and don't have a good enough plan or don't see, you know, the, the amount of reps guys are taking or not taking. You, you mentioned Wilt. I mean, obviously you didn't have Brandon, but did you, were you hoping to rotate the linebackers more than you did? You know what? Yeah and no. You know, I think we wanted to, um, and, um, and and for whatever reason, just didn't get to uh, do it enough. But uh, we, you know, we need to put it that way. We just need to keep them fresh. I mean, the D line gets, you know, some freshness. It helps develop those guys. And you know, I don't want to find out what Tyler's like when when you know he doesn't have any you know reps under his belt. So he needs to you know get his feet wet and some power five ball. Kevin had a lot of snaps, but not a lot of targets. Um, we missed him a couple times, um, you know. Um, so he was open a few times where we didn't get it to him. Uh, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll get it to him more, Jerry. We'll get it to him. Yeah, the, the, the expansion, the decision to <coughs> expand the playoffs. I mean, I imagine that was in place last year. You guys would have been in the tournament. So yeah, it would have been. You know, it's, it's great. I mean, we, we all want to play. T- you know, everybody wants to get in the playoffs, right? I mean, go to 25 teams. We're, we're good. Uh, I think everybody would like that. You know, it's still just what what does it all, you know, what all comes of it. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on that. we got a big game up. But, you know, more teams, the better it is for everybody. The more people people can say, hey, I was in that playoff. Um, you know, the, the key is to let's get in it first and then we'll, you know, deal with what happens when we get to it. Uh, so, yeah, everybody's got more opportunities and opportunities are good. Um, it's like I said over the weekend, um, you know, it comes down to it better not be all about the money and we better protect these kids. And I've said that, you know, five years ago when we talk about going, from, you know, uh, expansion and going from the two to, you know, from the BCS to the current model right now. And it's just how many more games is it? Are we still playing a 12 game, cha- you know, season? Are we still playing? Cha- I, I don't know anything. And again, that was, you know, I think we we're getting into game week when that, you know, we're into the game day when that whole thing came out. So I don't know what the I don't know what's going on. So, and I haven't called to ask. I'm not calling the commissioner. I care less right now. Uh, we got a game to play. Jeff, we'll take you. Did you have one, Chris? Yeah. We'll take Chris and one more. Thank you, Corey. Keaton um, was, uh, was talking about how there was a, there, they were finding a rhythm towards the end of the game. He felt like that was coming along. That's, that part of that's natural. But what did you see from him over the, over the weekend, looking over it, working with his teammates, being the leader to try to maybe help manifest that going into this week? Yeah, it's hard to see, you know, all that. I mean, I, I just, I just know he's comfortable right now. Um, I think he came out of the game comfortable. You know, uh, you know, quarterbacks are always the leader. Uh, you know, he's in my office last night talking about like, you know, hey, what do I need to do better? What can I, you know, how can I help? Um, and, and all those things. So he's doing and saying all the right things right now. And he's a, he's a tremendous kid. If you spend any time with him at all, it's like wow. I mean, we went from Kenny to Slovis, and those are two, those are two good ones. And we got Nick Patty. That's just you got to love him.
We're good. Ben Sauls converts all his kicks uh, on Thursday. And Van der Haar had that block punt, obviously. After watching the tape of that block punt, what could be cleaned up there? And thoughts on Ben Sauls going 5-5? Yeah. Five five? Well, you know, again, Sam with his first, you know, let's go, let's go to the good. And then we'll go to the bad. Um, you know, the first thing is, um, you know, Ben Sauls did a great job. Uh, it's what we expected. That's what we've seen since spring ball is the consistency, uh, the, you know, the mental toughness. Um, in, you know, kicking is not easy. Uh, I don't know if I'd rather be a quarterback or a kicker, okay? Um, I don't know if I'm mentally tough enough to play either one. I'd rather just go hit somebody that got in my way. Um, and then going to Sam, you know, Sam, um, Sam, you know, had a decent night. First guy, you know, first time ever playing in a real football game. Uh, it was, you know, a great atmosphere for him for to get get into it. But if you go back and watch every one of his punts, uh, I think there's six of them. Two of them he takes five steps and then a punt. Okay, uh, the other ones he kicked it. You know, he took three steps. He's been told to take three steps and punt the ball. Uh, there's a thing called artificial you know, hang time that you'd like to get. The longer you can hold on to the ball and give our gunners a chance to get down the field, we feel pretty good with our gunners and, and the guys running down the field. Um, but he's supposed to take three steps. Uh, on the one that he dropped down at the three-yard line or two-yard line, our guys milked it down to the one, whatever it was. He took six steps to his left, really five steps in a, in a, in a swing leg, which is the sixth, which gets you blocked and causes problems. And again, on that block, you know, the protection wasn't as good. We can clean up some things there. But... Um, you know, he needs to get the ball off. We didn't tell him any artificial hang time. Just get the ball off. You know, give us a chance to go down and cover the punt. Um, that's what he didn't do right. But, you know, and he apologized right after the game. Like, Coach, thanks for not benching me and all that. He's a great kid. And, and he made mistakes, and we were able to survive it. Okay. You're a touchdown underdog at home. Is that something you discussed with your group? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Didn't know until found out about a minute ago. So, Again, it doesn't matter. I mean, what, what are they? Whoever sets these odds, who knows? You know, you guys are gambling. I don't. You know, I'm not a gambler. And uh, five point seven points underdog. I like being the underdog. That's good. I will. I will share it.